Gamescom Day 1 just concluded and it dropped an absolute stack of video games on top of our heads, so I guess it's time for another showcase speedrun. It's been a while since the last one of these, but let me show you all the games that I found interesting in this big old showcase. Little Nightmares is back with its third addition to the excellent series, however this time they're breaking the mold and giving us a co-op adventure. Busting away from the journey of six and instead featuring two new characters, it should be an absolute treat just like the last two entries, and this time you can pass off a little bit of that discomfort to whichever sorry soul you drag along with you. Black Myth Wukong first showed us what it had in store in 2021, but now it's back with a really impressive new trailer. It's shaping up to be something worth keeping an eye on after seeing this trailer and the 50-ish minute gameplay demo dropped by the developers just recently. It's looking to slot somewhere in the middle of Souls and Neo in terms of gameplay, and it will follow the tales of traditional Chinese folklore throughout 16th century China, releasing sometime in 2024. This guy has a lot of memories in the Killing Floor series, so I'm very happy to see that Killing Floor 3 is making its way to us. Uh, <laughs> I'm a happy little camper indeed. If you're unfamiliar with the series, it's a brutal round-based shooter with some gore galore, and we got a trailer showing off some of the horrifying new monsters we'll be needing to put down. We got a very brief look at Mandragora, which is a really nice looking 2.5D side-scrolling action RPG that in the developer's own words has a deep Metroidvania and Souls-like element. I'm liking the look of it personally, and it's listed as coming soon on Steam, but no date yet. The creators of Untitled Goose Game are back with Thank Goodness You're Here. This one looks to be a light-hearted, quirky game packed to the absolute rafters with wackiness. The trailer kind of feels like watching a cartoon whilst blasted off your face on numerous illicit substances. Yeah, I'll check it out. I mean, I'll buy it, damn it, it looks interesting. We got a very solid trailer from Crimson Desert, which is yet another open world action RPG. If you're spotting the desert in the name, yep, it's made by the developers of Black Desert. In fact, it's even set in the very same world. I'm sure it'll interest a lot of people. I'll wait to see more of it, which I'm sure we will in the months coming. Assassin's Creed Mirage showed off a new trailer that focuses entirely around 9th century Baghdad, complete with a full Arabic voiceover. It does a good job at setting the scene for the 400th Assassin's Creed game hitting our shelves, and it'll be interesting to see how they go on a smaller, more focused scale. I'm always a fan of survival colony builders, so I'm pretty interested in Endzone 2. Very creatively and very uniquely set after a cataclysmic disaster ended the world, we'll be repopulating the last good bits of the planet. The game promises a harsh and unforgiving world, and I hope it'll deliver just like Frostpunk does. Tekken 8 briefly showed off its single-player game mode, which appears to be a callback to the classic arcade days. But, more importantly, it also hit us with an official release date. It'll be coming to us on January 26th, 2024 on PS5, Xbox, and PC. Looks like the fighting fanatics are off to a pretty good start next year, can't complain about that. I personally love when horror games go with everyday kind of main characters. Gorn as Leon S. Kennedy post-trauma follows the tale of Roman, a middle-aged train conductor that's wrapped up in a twisted reality full of mysteries and horrors. It's certainly wearing some inspirations on its sleeves, and it looks appropriately disturbing. It's been 20 years since Homeworld 2, but finally the third entry to the classic RTS series is on its way. The game is well known for its 3D RTS space combat and its detailed world, which they decided to show off here, giving us a story reveal trailer and a peek at its new visuals. Go check it out if you're interested in RTS games. Call of Duty is back like the plague with its 40 millionth entry in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Very creative name. Anyway, we were shown a nice extended look at the first level of the experience, and interestingly, the game will send players to Verdansk, aka the location of Call of Duty Warzone. More COD, I guess. Nightingale is a co-op survival game that has always caught my eye. Between the Victorian style, the premise, and the hunger for more solid multiplayer survival games, it's got me sold. Good and bad news here, we got a new trailer and it looks great. However, the early access is delayed until the 22nd of February 2024. Lords of the Fallen has shown us plenty of gameplay, which has already got me excited for its release on October the 13th. This show, however, they opted to show us an extended story trailer, which does a good job in continuing my excitement. It looks grim, dark, and full of beasties to cut down. If you're interested in Lords of the Fallen, definitely check this one out too. CD Projekt Red hit us with not only a Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty DLC trailer, but they've also confirmed that regardless of DLC purchase, everyone will get access to a 2.0 update 
of Cyberpunk that promises to bring many improvements. It might be finally time to give the game a go after its uh, shoddy release. I mean, I've been looking forward to it personally. I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. If you're a fan of classic real-time strategy games, then Stormgate promises to be a spiritual successor to things like StarCraft and WarCraft 3. In fact, it's even made by former Activision Blizzard devs. We got a good little developer update on one of the new factions and a brief overview of the world at the show. It's also going to be free to play, which is pretty nice. For those of you that are fans of Civilization 4X strategy games, we got a look at Ara, History Untold. Also hitting us with a story trailer seems to be a bit of a theme today. It looks like it'll be similar to games like Civ, as you'll be building up your nation, doing generally tyrannical and dickish genocidal maneuvers on your foes, and vying to become the greatest ruler known to history. Seems like rapper Ice-T has an official heist of his own within Payday 3. That's uh, not on the bingo card for 2023, but is pretty neat, not gonna lie. He also said on stage that he's got a lot of experience with heists himself, which is either referencing his movie from the 2000s or self-snitching. I don't know. I only he does. And lastly, we got a reveal trailer for the free-to-play Unreal Engine 5 looter shooter, The First Descendant. If you're a fan of the shoots and loots, you can give its open beta a crack between September 19th and the 25th for anyone that signs up on their website, that is. It features solo and co-op missions with giant bosses and the usual looter shooter stuff, you know what I mean? And with that, that's everything interesting on the opening night of Gamescom 2023. Gaming really just never seems to slow down, does it? I mean, I complain and personally, I got more to do. Gotta say, it's pretty interesting seeing all these awesome new titles flying out of the woodworks. Anywho, I'm Fizz, your local game dealer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.